Depending on your needs, starting a Plex Media Server can either be really simple or a little complex. So in today's video, I'm gonna to try to explain a few things that you should take into consideration before you start to build your own server. Before I get too far, I just wanna take a moment to say that if you do find this video useful and you decide to try Plex, please consider using my link in the description to create your free account. It will help my channel grow and give me more chances to test and review Plex-related devices. Also, I thank you. Now, starting with the basics, the first question I always get from people is, what kind of hardware do I really need? Now, this is kind of a tricky question because it really all depends on each person's usage, and more so, what type of usage. To explain what that means, I should tell you how Plex works, at least a basic part of it. Plex is a digital media content manager that takes all of your videos, music, and photos and organizes them into one interface. It allows you to browse and find your content easily from inside or outside of your network. Plex has more client apps than I can count, ranging on all types of devices, things like smart TVs, tablets, cell phones, and media streamers. Each of those devices get turned into a full-fledged streaming client that can take your content straight out of your home and serve it to you anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection. To achieve this, Plex sometimes has to convert media on the fly so that the receiving client can understand it. That could either be from the format or the limitation of the internet speed. But this is why Plex is so awesome. It makes so many different devices compatible with all of your favorite movies and TV shows. But it's also why it does take a little bit of horsepower to get the job done. Exactly how much CPU usage is kind of difficult to determine because there are so many variables. Things like what type and how many Plex apps are gonna be using it at the same time, or will you be using subtitles, and will those clients be local or remote connections? So if you're looking at piecing together a new server or maybe you have some spare parts lying around the house, Plex has figured out a basic way of you calculating what kind of CPU is needed. Just keep in mind that the following is for desktop PCs or servers and it's only a basic guideline. Don't worry, later on I will talk a little bit more about running Plex server on different solutions like network attached storage devices or something similar to the Nvidia Shield. Okay, so the easiest way to figure out what you need is to first start out with how many transcoded streams you will be using at the same time. Now a transcoded stream is usually used on a remote client or small devices like phones or tablets. And yeah, I say usually because most clients inside your home can use something called direct play or direct stream, which take very little processing power to provide. So if you're planning on having two family members that live elsewhere to have access to your Plex server, then count that as two transcoded streams. Maybe you or someone living with you might wanna watch TV shows at their lunch break at work or school. Count those too. After you figure out what your maximum number of concurrent streams are, now you have to match those with the CPU. And the easiest way to figure this out is passmark.com. On this website, you can look up benchmarks for all kinds of processors and see what their passmark score is. This number is extremely useful because it will give you an idea of how many 1080p streams you can transcode at the same time when you divide that number by 2000. So for example, let's say that you have an old Intel i7-3770K that you used in your previous gaming build. Since you've upgraded your computer, you want to put it to good use in a standalone Plex media server. Searching through the Passmark website, you find your CPU and you quickly find out that that processor has a Passmark score of 9,555. Divide that by 2,000 and we get a CPU with the ability to transcode around five streams at the same time. And I know what you're thinking, my math is just a little bit off here and you're absolutely right. However, in my experience with Plex over the years, I have learned that this method of figuring out what a CPU can handle is much more of a rough estimate than a hard number, and rounding up a little is completely allowed. I can't actually tell you a hard number because there are a lot of variables to what a server has to do to make a video file playable for you. Things like the codec, the container, bitrate, and resolution all play a major role on how much work has to be done by the server. In my example, I actually have that i73770K from an old build that I turned into a dedicated server. And I have actually had seven streams at the same time being transcoded without any issues of buffering. Of course, things do start to slow down a little bit when I fast forward or try to bring up a new stream, but the end result is a server with much more available streams than just five. So just take that calculation I gave you as a starting point for some basic planning. 
As for the consideration of memory on a dedicated Plex server, well, you don't really need a lot. Plex uses more CPU than anything to work its magic, so unless you need the extra RAM for something like a ZFS file system in FreeNAS, 8 gigabytes should be plenty. For the longest time, I ran 16 gigabytes on a Windows Plex server and never used more than five or six gigabytes, most of which was used by the operating system. Now, one topic with a huge potential and extra cost is hard drives, but really it all depends on how many movies you wanna have and how good of quality they're gonna be. Now, you could rip all your Blu-ray movies at full quality with no compression and end up with video files as large as 50 or 60 gigabytes, and that's gonna add up pretty darn quick. However, if you wanna throw a little H.264 or H.265 compression in the mix, bring it down to around eight gigabytes, you'll be able to store a lot more media on a single drive without losing much quality. Just make sure to consider what kind of protection you wanna have for those files. And by protection, I mean, what happens if your drive fails? Without any kind of redundancy, you're gonna lose all that data. But if you look at running a few drives in RAID or something similar, then you will have a little protection from that scenario. I won't be going too far into this topic because really it deserves a video of its own, but you can find some links in the description that will provide you with some more information on this topic. Just look for the links under the title RAID and other parity options. One thing I will talk about though is the use of an SSD as your primary drive. In my experience, using an SSD as the data folder of Plex can greatly improve your overall speed and usability. And depending on what operating system you choose for your first Plex server, most of the time that Plex data folder will be installed on your primary boot drive unless otherwise specified. Again, this is a little bit more in depth and more information can be found in the links below or the cards above on how to master your Plex media server. Moving on, the next thing to think about is your operating system. Now, Plex can run off just about anything these days, but each option has its own pros and cons. Those pros and cons can be heavily reliant on your own ability to operate a particular system, like Linux. I can try to give you a starting point, but I recommend you choose whichever OS you feel comfortable either running or learning in. The first and most obvious option is Windows. This will give you a comfortable environment where you can easily install and manage your server. Plus, you can also easily run software raids in Windows or hardware raids with the right motherboard for protection. However, with the Windows Server, you will lose some of the server performance to run the operating system itself, along with the ability to run more advanced file systems like ZFS. Next up, we have some pre-made solutions for home NAS servers like FreeNAS, NAS for Free, or Unraid. Those are only a few examples, but they all come with a number of different benefits. With each, you can have better protection for your data, more options to get the most out of your drives, and an easy way to install free third-party apps to make your server do other things for you. Not to mention, each of these options will use much fewer system resources than Windows will, but they may need some additional RAM to run smoothly. For example, it's recommended for FreeNAS to have one gigabyte of RAM for every terabyte of hard drive space you have, and that can really add up. And then we have some more advanced options like Ubuntu, Debian, or CentOS. All of these work really well as a Plex server, but might take some extra time in setting up or learning before you can get them working correctly. So which OS you select will depend heavily on what you know or what you're willing to learn. I personally started out with FreeNAS, and then I moved everything over to my main Windows machine because I needed more speed. And now I'm working on an Unraid server, but I also like to try out new things, even if I don't know how to do them. I just find it interesting. I have made a few videos that guide you through the process of installing Plex on various systems. You can check out the cards above or links below to view them. Now I know this next subject isn't directly related to building your server, but something you wanna consider is your internet package. And again, this will heavily depend on your needs. Okay, so how fast you're able to actually upload will drastically affect your usage. The great thing here is that Plex gives you an option to limit your bandwidth usage to external clients. However, you will still need to provide some kind of decent speeds to get a decent quality. With that said, if you have a basic internet service with three, one, or lower megabits per second upload speed, you might run into some issues. I personally find a 1.5 megabit stream is about the lowest I wanna go to watch a video. Your mileage may vary. But taking into consideration your bandwidth you will be using for the rest of your household, a minimum of five megabit per second upload speed should allow you to stream two or maybe three clients at the same time at 1.5 megabits per second with a little room to spare. 
The last thing I wanna talk about is pre-built solutions. And I mean things like network attached storage devices or the Nvidia Shield. A couple of years ago, I would have told you that a store-bought NAS device just didn't have enough horsepower to be a real Plex server. But things have come a long way and new devices are coming up all the time with some pretty good hardware specs. I've personally tested NAS devices and I have tested the Nvidia Shield as Plex server, both with surprisingly good results. So if you wanna check out some easy to use and easy to set up devices, Devices, I will link to those reviews in the cards above and the description below. Now remember, everything I talked about today is only a starting point to building your first Plex Media Server. Things can get much more complicated and there are many ways to improve on your server. So as I create them, I will include more video links in the description that will expand on these methods so you can become a Plex Master. And again, if you're thinking about trying Plex and you found this information useful, please consider using my Plex link below to create your free account. It helps build my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and have a great day.